Welcome to the Bougie Black Brother Network. Showing up today. This is Sean from the Bougie Black Brother Network, and you're in tune to the Hidden Gems podcast. Today, I'm here with Dr. Supreme Understanding. How's it going today, Supreme? Man, you sound so sophisticated. Man. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Peace, peace. Supreme is going to be coming back, so don't worry. You're definitely going to be able to see him later. I wanted to do a podcast. I yeah, don't do worry. Different, yeah, we, we're going see to see if somebody wanted to just listen. Right. You know, because I started out with books where you just had to read. You couldn't even hear me, wasn't that? It wasn't no LeVar Burton reading it out loud to you. <laughs> uh, speaking of your books, uh, you wrote 26 of them, right? I, I wrote maybe like 10. Okay. I edited and published 26. Okay, so what was the uh, what was the 10 books that you, you did write and publish by yourself? or? So the first book... We probably spent a while talking on that, but yeah. I'll tell you the story how I got to it because every book was um, every book was part of a curriculum. So for you to understand the story of the books, you got to understand the story before the books. Okay. Which, yeah, go ahead and break that down. Tell me, tell right, me about so your curriculum. See how you quickly, I can tell the story of my life. Take your time. All right. <laughs> Taking a drink of water. Taking a shot of Douce right now <laughs> to get ready. Now I don't drink Douce. I drink Moo Cow, but I wanted a shot of the Black Owned Company. <laughs> Um, so, my family's from Bangladesh, they were immigrants, and, um, they were both coming from some pretty bad circumstances. I was born into a family that was, I was the only child, Mm -hmm. and my parents was older, and they was going through their own things, like I said. That kind of left me on my own a lot. Gotcha. But let's just say, at this point, the story begins... With a little Bengali boy in the hood. Okay. It's a church city in the early 80s. Right. It's the height of the crack ap- epidemic. Every time I come outside, it's, it's paraphernalia on my front porch. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I got, I got the whole school shut down, my elementary school, when I was seven years old. Because I was bring, I brought in a little vial of cocaine. It was empty. It was just, I brought it, it was right in front of my house. I filled it with some baby powder. And I want to play a little baby dope dealer. Right. I'm like six or seven years old and I want to play like I'm the dope dealer. I want to be the dope man. Yeah, you're surrounded. I'm a little, a little Indian boy want to be the dope man though. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I didn't know that the, the little vial, the little red top, it fell out my pocket. Mm. The next day, McGruff the crime dog was at the school. And they had a whole shutdown in the cafeteria session. They taught us about drugs. These kids had their eyes big. I was like, I, I knew all this already. I'm right. bored to death. Until I realized the reason for it is because they said they found some drugs. And then they said they found a little vial. And I said, oh. I was looking for it. I said, that's my dope. <laughs> <laughs> they go get me. So this is... This is not. This was not even the first time that I was scared of the police. But at mm-hmm. seven years old, I'm already like realizing that I'm not growing up like the other little Indian kids. Right. The other little Indian kids didn't think so either. I was a ghetto Indian kid to them. They used to be. They was mean to me. Right. Because they want to be part of the white world. The greatest jewel for until recently. Now until maybe like the past ten years. Mm-hmm. For the average. Immigrants kid in America, you fuck what kind of immigrant. But if your parents came to the country, quote unquote, seeking opportunity, you're supposed to be the one to cash in on the opportunity. And you know in traditional culture, you're supposed to do what your parents want you to do. Right. You know what I mean? Ain't not all that I'm doing what I came up with, homie. We just, what the fuck? What we made you for that? Yeah, this you know is why I mean? you here. Right. You're supposed to continue the family plan. We've been doing this shit for thousands of years. Man. Yeah, Follow you ain't gonna break this. You yeah, know? just because. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. You can't push people to say, do the right thing and then criticize them for doing what they feel like it's the right thing to do. That's human condition, though, homie. That's just human condition. Like, that's adults. Like, my, my parents wasn't no smarter than me. Mm-hmm. They was more fucked up than me. They had more generational shit to break through. 
Like, you know what I mean? Like, like they grew up in an era with less knowledge of self available than I did. So even 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 though they came from another part of the world, see, in that other part of the world, knowledge of self became a religion and ritual. Right. They've been talking they God over there for so long that they don't believe in no more. Mm. Yeah. So over here, I was like, okay, y'all came for opportunity, but y'all raised the baby in hell. What y'all expect me to be? So by the time I, like I said, I'm, I'm jumping off the porch like five years old, really. Like, and I'm in the mix of it now. So now when I'm really, by the time I'm nine, I'm bad. I'm getting kicked out the house. I'm whatever bad mean. You know what I mean? Right. And um, by 10, I said, fuck it, I'm running away on my own. So I was 10, running away by the time I'm 14, I'm an alcoholic. So I done been through the, by 15, I'm seven drugs, you know? Right, right, right. Don't tell people, like, yo, don't put me in a movie. I'm not Aziz Ansari. So I sold cocaine. From 10 on, you been you jumped off the porch. I jumped off the porch at, I didn't jump off the porch. I was pushed off the porch at nine. Okay. But mentally, I jumped off the porch at five. Right. Because at five, I realized that my parents are too busy fighting themselves and, and going through what they're going through. I'm going to have to raise myself because they can't teach me about America. At they five? Go, yeah. I, I started teaching myself English at five. English ain't my first language. Right. You know, English, my, Bengali's my first yeah, language. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I start like, okay, I, I want to learn how to talk like the people in, out here. Because if I got an accent, somebody going to victimize me. Yeah. And I ain't about to be victimized. Yeah. So I made a decision early on that just because I'm little, skinny, Indian, five, or whatever, you ain't about to victimize me. So I, I quickly learned, all right, I'm going to be little for a long time. I better learn how to motherfucking wrestle. I better learn how to do certain shit. I better learn how to, oh, here's the best one. I better learn how to be smart. Damn, when you're smart, you could beat even the big motherfuckers. I said, I put motherfucking big people on their knees by being smart, crying, begging, like, just smart. I ain't even put a, had to put a hand on them, but seeing the fear of God in them. Mm -hmm. And this as a kid. So, intelligence. I'm like, okay, intelligence is how I'm going to move. But I didn't get righteousness. I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to step on people's heads like right. Mario until I end up at the top. Right. And I don't watch Scarface too. And I don't sold a little bit of cocaine. But I couldn't sell it for more than a week. Because my conscience ate at me. I sold it for like, I'd say like a month of selling coke was enough for me to feel sick. Like, mm. I had a lady show up with her two babies fresh from school. They're still in their school uniform. Same kind my daughter wear now. And the babies made eye contact with me. And they no dope man alive that could tell you who ain't been through that and ain't had a moment of conscience. But what he had to do was he had to either stop making his money or he had to kill that part of himself. Yeah. And you chose so to I, keep it. Man, I didn't want to kill that part of myself. We was robbing people. I'd be like, man, we beating them too much. I had conscience. I'd be like, well, we, you know, we ain't doing nothing to us. We just taking his money. Well, then we got to beat him on top of taking his money. Mm -hmm. Like, because but we had so much rage in us. Like, we was just angry. Like, we wanted to... You know what I mean? Like, let it out. But we could only let it out people that live within a few blocks of us. So at, at 15, you were like, uh, I can't rob my own people no more. Right. Right. I never wanted to. Not at any point. Okay. I was a little kid. I see the little Vietnamese boys coming down the street. I'm saying my Jersey City is multi. Yeah. Real diverse. Yeah. But I always say just give you more people to hate. Because if you don't got understanding, you're going to end up with hate. Mm. The white man, he keep staying power because we all hate each other. Everybody question each other. Don't nobody know what anybody really into. Asians don't know what black people go through. They don't understand what it's like in a black household. I, I lived in so many black households that I can say to my... Like, what the fuck is you talking about? Like, you wrong. That is not how it go. Mm -hmm. And then I'm living... From seeing Indian households, I got to tell black folks, like, yo, you know we got crazy relatives too. But we don't let them come outside. Right. Right. You let Uncle Peebo come outside. Yep. We stick Uncle Peebo in the fucking attic. <laughs> Which one is better? Outside. That motherfucker needs sunlight. He need to function like a member of society. What we do, we hide them. We hide shit. Mm -hmm. That shit ain't right and exact. But who would think that Indian people got liars, fucking mentally ill people all through? We got so many thieves. Motherfucker run off with the bag every time they try to build a temple. Mm. But you would never know that's what's the norm of it. Because you would just think... Whatever the white man says, is where it go. He right. is a smart math. We be doctors. We get some, you know what I mean? The Arabs get the gas stations. They do that. They got the oil. Everybody get put in a box to where we not really understanding that somebody got their foot on all our necks. And I figured it out young. So, coming back to these little so, these boys. Right. They wasn't even picking on no person. I mean, they was trying to put the magnifying glass in the caterpillar. I felt bad for the caterpillar. We was, Black folks wasn't doing stuff like that. Nah, not even close. 
I mean, now we now but don't get me wrong. We was mobbing the streets and that's it. That's and, it. and well, now, if I had on the if I was dumb enough to wear a chain, I'm I'm 14. I don't sell no dope. I don't got no nothing on me. I I think I might have carried a little knife on me, but I wanted to walk around with a little chain with a little medallion on it. Of course, somebody gonna try me. Exactly. That's yeah. a norm. That's literally capitalism. <laughs> you literally gotta respect the jokes. Like you don't got it. You got the drop on me. You got it. You got it. Right, right. Respect do. You know, because that's what you do. Yeah. And some, if you don't do it well, your fate come to you. If you live the jack boy lifestyle, there's a fate for that. Every lifestyle got a fate to it. You know, except God. So how, so, so did you have like a group of before, like at 15? This is what happened at 15. Right. I hate to cut you because I know what, you, what, what happened. This is what happened. This, this is when I got knowledge of self. Mm-hmm. So the whole time I've been seeking, I'm seeking direction, seeking and seeking clarity. I want to know. Why well, real quick, did you have did you have a group of people following you? Your age range or? Oh, did I have followers? Yeah, because I thought you was before going that. To, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Because I was thinking like you know we we, we uh see I'm always thinking about who I learn from mm-hmm. rather than who I taught. I don't take credit for like all that because I don't know who I taught. I teach by if I if I walk a certain way and somebody start walking like me, I taught them without wanting to. Right. You know. So yeah, I had all kinds of people that like like younger people would like my younger friends and 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 all my little homies would ask questions because I was a smart motherfucker. I was just, I was smart. You know? Okay. And and because I'm smart, they'd ask me silly like not silly but things that you don't ask no one else. Like why sky blue. I ain't had nothing to teach back then. I wanted the answers, so I saw and I saw. And when I got the lessons, I said, "Damn, this shit seemed deep. Couldn't make sense of none of it." Okay. So I'm still seeking. Turned out one of the older homies is in the hood. He been had it all along. So, what we at his house? We smoking, we drinking, and we freestyling. This is what we doing. One day, we we just doing that, and he pull out a binder, just like this. This for y'all, y'all just. Y'all is not here. Y'all can't see. Oh, a little school binder. Yeah, like a little plastic, like a school binder, right? And and he started going through it. And he had paper just like this and sheet protectors. Mm. So I said, this got to be a holy book. It got to be something. And I turned to a page, and I remember this page for the rest of my life. And it had the supreme alphabet on it. Mm. And every letter had a meaning. And every meaning sounded divine and important and purposeful and righteous. No, it wasn't like G is for garbage, like an Elmer. Right, right, you know what right. I mean? <laughs> He's stupid. Yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> and at the top of the thing, it had a man. Just like I put on the cover of my third book that we published, Knowledge Itself. You see, okay. it all goes to the books. And he was he had his arms and legs spread out, and it said A-L-L-A-H all around him. It said 360 degrees. Right. And then it spelled out arm, leg, leg, arm, head. And it didn't say a lot. But if you went around in a circle, you just had to conclude, oh, Allah. Mm-hmm. Oh, but up until now, I've been looking at Islam, I'm looking at Buddhism, I'm looking at everything. So I knew Allah was the name of God. Right. But then me seeing that this man being represented as the personification of that oh, God, God. And the flesh, it clicked for me. I was like, oh, this is what everybody, even in, even in, like thinking back, the Indians teach that too. If it's a holy man that come in your house, they call him Bhagavan, which means God. Mm. They, 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 they namaste. I see the God in you. Like it's always a God statement. You know what I okay. mean? Like all that is God. Yoga is getting back to God. Yoga is yeah. you getting back to God within, like the unification where everything break down. It's not stretching. The stretching is the physical postures that you got to do to approximate your mental stretching. Right. Interesting. Right. Your spiritual stretching is approximated by your physical body. So that image. That spoke to me, that opened me up, that led me on this path to where even before I knew my people's history, I knew why my my last name is Das. Before I knew that Das meant black, mm-hmm. I knew that I was connected to these people in the hood. Embraced me, so I, you know the hood take everybody in. Yeah, you know, that's, you, yeah, that's what like, we do. Really, like you know, you got if you are Arab, they call you a sand nigga. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Like white people get called nigga because if you poor and white, black folks realize other white people don't like you. And so they say, we'll take you in. Yeah. Because that's the love. See, that's black love. White, white folks don't do it the other way around. And the interesting thing about those folks that got the past in the, in the hood, they use that and they don't always give back. 
That got the passes to the hood? That's what you said? Well, no, they got the pass in the hood early on by being raised up in the hood. See, a lot of, a lot of them white folks that was in poverty, right. and they had to live in the projects. Right. They don't live in the projects no, no more. more. Yeah. There ain't too many don't families claim. that's been living in, among black communities for four generations straight. Because after four generations, they black. Mm. Because they daughter marry a black person, they son yep. marry a black person. Yep. By the fourth generation, they're not a white family no yeah. more. Yeah. Good point. So you will never see a white family that has been white, white, white for generations and just living poor. We let them amongst us. But when a white person is there and then they leave, they don't be like, oh, the hood raised me. The hood took me in. The hood yeah. loved me. That's why my hood, my love for the hood, I love it. If you really look at it, I'm still in the hood. Yeah, you you still here. You still here, bro. In a beautiful house. That was It was a surprise that I knew you was still on the block, but I didn't I know. know yeah, right. yeah. I, I, but I didn't know you was... So close to the block, <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying. So in the cut, though. Yeah, in, in the cut, you wouldn't even know. You know what I'm saying. So, dog, I. It's all about creating your own heaven. See, that's what I'm right. telling people. The books is all about creating your own reality. And what do you want to create for yourself? Elijah Muhammad taught us that you can create heaven and hell right here on earth. Hell already here, mm -hmm. but you should sit yourself in heaven at once. You should have money, friendship. You know what I mean? All walks of life, not things that you need. Not just things that you want. Right. So what knowledge of self gave me was really knowledge of self. It led me on a journey. And the hood was a major part of it. Because for the first part of me getting it, I got in the hood. I didn't get in the college campus. I didn't get off the internet. I got on the streets. I got it from the same type of people when people be like, oh, the gods will beat you up for not knowing your lessons. Right. I got it from them guys. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, they don't beat you up for not knowing your lessons. They beat you up for being fake. You said, big homie, you seen the book. You know what I'm saying? And, and and that was the first thing that, that, yeah. that really caught your eye. Now, was Big Homie, did you go back and were you getting yeah, he had teachings teach from Big Homie? Yeah, I wanted him to teach me. His name was Pure Son. Okay. He, look, this is him right here. See, all the people that ain't got video. See, I keep him on my, on my, on my, um, hmm. okay. right there. That's that's me and him. That's me at 15 with a bottle of ENJ in my hand and he snapped the picture. This selfie's back before we had, that's with a Polaroid. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You still got it too. Yeah, homie, I took, I used to, I used to get cameras from like the smokers would have cameras. Yeah. I took the camera to the hood and we taking pictures. That's love right I'm there. pictures. You know what I mean? Like just to commemorate this moment, like we all together, like, mm -hmm. you know, just, that's why I got a few pictures, from, you know, from when I was back then. She looked like an old Mob Deep album cover. Yeah, that's what I was looking at. Yeah, you you had posted a few. Um, how long did he did he teach you, or how long were you under him? You um, know, before you was like he knew he couldn't teach me past the one to ten. See, he he didn't learn all the lessons. Okay. He was he was kind of like he was just here to get me from one point to another. Some people just walk you. Yeah, to cross point. the bridge. Yeah, he walked me. He 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 was around me. He showed me a lot. Homie, that's why I, I, I have to think about everything. Everything requires a lot of thought. So I've got a tradition of thinking from knowledge itself. Because when Sun walked me uh, from him to Seaborn and Earth Asia, they was the elders. They were, they had a family. They had a home. They had generations. They had children and grandchildren already. Okay. One of their children was eight years old. And uh, their child taught me the next lesson. After the one of ten, their child taught me. Their child finished the student enrollment for me. Wow. He finished teaching me. Yeah, so when I'm 15 and I'm seeing an eight-year-old quoting, he went through the supreme mathematics. That's all the numbers. He went through the supreme alphabet. That's all the letters and what they mean. Then he went through the student enrollment, and he started going through the one to 36, which is the next lesson after that. Okay. And I was like, he had, this basically means he had a whole half a book worth of information memorized. And you 15, looking at him, 18, eight years old, like. And he was swole. <laughs> and he was ripped. He was ripped at eight because he was doing it with his shirt off and it made me mad. Because <laughs> I had a bottle of ENJ in my pocket that I had hidden because mm -hmm. I didn't want them to know I was an alcoholic. So I got a 15-year-old beer belly and I'm looking at this little ripped eight-year-old quoting degrees, looking confident, clearing the eyes and, I'm look and to this day, me and him, like we still talk. That's what's up. Right, like, because they once books came out, yeah. oh, they household got the first batch of books. I bet, yeah, that's what's up. That's yeah. what's up. So, yeah, that led me on a path. And the next thing I know, I, I, I was, um, man, I, I really wanted to get out of Jersey. So by 16, I was about to finish high school because I, I, I was in school early. So and you finished high school and everything? At 16. Yep. I, was, I, was, I got kicked out of high school. Like, we went, I went to a private school, but my family didn't have, like, we didn't have nothing that looked like money. Right. We didn't have the lifestyle of money of any kind. 
Besides, what we what what was happening with my pops was a doctor, but he had lost his license by being oh, his laws. Like I said, my family this is lost. Yeah, so a yeah. doctor. He was a psychiatrist, but he was only able to treat people in his home, in our house. Wow! Because he had lost his license from doing a bunch of wild shit, including being the dope man. Including being the dope man. Not limited to, but including being the dope man. In the late 70s, what is my pops was one of New York's leading motherfucking Vicodin, yo, Perks, Mollies, and all that. Yeah. He was providing it to the dope man. So, oh, right, yeah. right, right. And when, look, and my mom was like, yo, right before we had you, your pops had just moved me into the country, and he got locked up behind this crazy shit. Damn. I'm fresh to the country. I barely speak English. I don't know what to do. And... She's, I said, so what did y'all do? I'm thinking Indian people don't got no criminal. They, like, you know, right, right. Indian, the stereotype. You know, not, yeah, the right. stereotype. Mm-hmm. She said, oh, well, his uncle called and he gave me the whole game plan. He said, do this and do that. And then you get the money off of this. Here's how you build Medicaid. Yeah. Straight. Yeah. Can't go to lawyer. So then my next question was, so he got off? She said, yeah, he got off. I said, here go the next big question. <laughs> this is how you know how hood I am. I said, did he snitch? She's like, nah, he ain't tell up nobody. I said, my pops are real. <laughs> I no, said, I've been so... living on her now. I don't, right. gotta, I don't gotta hold my head in the shade. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's up. That's what's up. Oh, man, that's wild. Where, where, where did the first book come from and, and how did it come about? Okay, so... In the story of my life so far, we at the point where I get to high school, we get to college. So mm-hmm. I, I, I'm, I'm leaving high school because, um, like, I'm young, but I'm ready to move out the city. My mom don't want me to move. I'm 16. I, like I said, I've been running away from home. I'm ready to go. I got kicked out of the first high school. My mama had to beg me. I love my mama. Me and her ain't always had a good relationship, but she begged me. She's like, school's the only thing I'm going to go hard on you about. You got to do school. She's like, Not, I ain't going to whatever else but school so I said fuck it I'll go to school no school would take me except for two of the worst performing schools in the city school that you get shot at right you know what I mean schools where they were you know the homie Jafar got shot that year he didn't make it to you know he like yeah he, he didn't make it to graduation you know what I mean like it just was like I remember when I, I came in and it was the shoot was fresh damn you know? and um damn and, you know, like, there wasn't a high standard of education, as you can imagine. It was right. like a high standard of management. And you experienced it. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, you know, like, the kids wasn't getting taught. They was getting controlled. They was getting managed. Like, let's just try to keep these kids sedated. Let's try to keep them sitting here. Now that they got uh, ADHD medication, they really can sedate you. Like, yeah. You submit to the school system, you become the zombie. Yeah. And I say that as a school teacher, because I know that for the, major- the majority of these schools, they produce in different levels of zombie. Now, you could be a class A zombie and be high-functioning, mm-hmm. or you could be a class Z zombie and be eating brains. But, you know, it ain't to say you're not a zombie because a zombie just means you ain't alive yet. And as long as you ain't living your own life with your own purpose, your own vision, you're dead. That ain't living. So you being programmed from an early age, and I seen that, and I was like, damn. So in the hood school, the programming is just sit there and be mediocre. Right. Don't excel. Because I had smart shit to say. I used to be spotting on them teachers. I will be talking about Illuminati. This in the 90s. You know all that shit. I don't want to be hearing about dude. Illuminati now. I'll be like, you so fucking late. You a late ass motherfucker. It's like you. It's like you be like, yo, you ever heard of Super Mario? <laughs> yo, Super Mario. Luigi. Right. Yo, did you know they got a dinosaur though? His name is Yoshi. Right, right. Yo, yo, the, but the turk. You know, you steadily talking to me about this shit like it's the greatest thing you ever heard. And I'm like, yo, you see my bookshelf. Right. I'm like, yo, we've been, did that, done that. 90s, 80s. Bruh, I'm sure before me, they was talking about this. Homie, the, the, what was that shit that they used to put on the train? Uh, the King Alfred plan? Mm-hmm. That was actually written by a black author. That was written by a black author. He wrote up the King Alpha plan before we had me- social media, before we had the internet, before we had email, before we had press releases. He printed it and he put it on paper and he left staple copies in the trains in New York all over the place. Mm. That's how we know about the King Alpha plan. Wow. That was marketing genius. Yeah. And he was teaching because King Alpha plan is just a story based on Rex 84, which is a real mandate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rex 84. Um... That's in How to Hustle and Win. Or Rap Race Revolution. 
<clears throat> and that's the first two books I put out because I wanted to teach motherfuckers. This, you see, the point I'm getting to is I'm over here peeping all this game. I'm using it to get myself where I want to be and make my life the way I want it to go. So when I graduate from high school, I, I'm going to college. Like, because um, my high school guidance counselor told me I wasn't college material. So that's my motivation. Up so, until then, I was cutting class, smoking in the stairwell. You could smoke in the stairwell in my school. 14, 15 years old. This, yeah, at this point, I'm 15, right? So, and I graduated 16. And my high school guidance uh, counselor was a white lady who later became the principal. She told me I was in college material. Who later became the principal. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and who later blocked me from speaking at the graduation. Wow. Right. Because my Christ intervention counselor, who was a black man by the name of James Johnson, <clears throat> put me in a program because I kept getting in trouble for cutting class. I would cut my, my own class because it was so whack and go hang out in another class where the substitute was there just talking to new girls that I didn't know. So what college did you go to? Morehouse. Morehouse. So this is the story. My guidance counselor, my Christ intervention counselor, rather, James Johnson, this program is called College Preparatory Incentive Program. You have to wear a button-up shirt every Wednesday with a tie. And my shit used to be baggy as fuck. <laughs> I used to be sagging my slacks. Just monkey shit. Just monkey. This shit do not look good. That's why I want to be seeing grown men sagging business clothes. I'll be like, bruh, did you just start wearing pants? <laughs> All right, so go ahead and, um, yeah, give me a, a, a breakdown of how you got to Atlanta and how you got to college. Okay. So, my... Crisis Intervention Counselor James Johnson had me in a program called CPIP, which was to get us into college. We okay. had to dress up, we had to do good in our classes, and if we did these things, we would get to go on trips, and go places. I was into that. I always liked traveling. I always, I always had a bug for wanting to be elsewhere. Okay. Um, and so he took us on a college tour at Morehouse, and with as many days as I had cut or missed in school, I almost got kicked out of school just for going on this trip. So two oh. things happened. I went on a trip that when I got back, I had to fight the school board. I was in the newspaper. If you Google Sujan Das, Jersey City, when, I don't know what else you'll find. I don't <laughs> know what else you'll find. But you'll find that I was in there like, you know, they're trying to, they trying to keep me from going to college. And I was speaking up because they're doing it to a bunch of black kids. Mm. Like, like okay. this ain't just me that they're doing it to. They're doing it because the black kids on the bus. Right. The whole bus black is going to, the, you know what I mean? Like, this was going to the black college tour. It was black kids going to a black college tour. Now the school board, they say, nah, we're going we to count these days as unexcused absences and take away your diploma. Literally, we gonna, you ain't going to graduate high school for going on a black college tour. Damn. Yeah, that's how wicked the system was and still is. Mm. So, this, of course, made me more determined to go. But um, not just speaking up. Like, not just that, like, that empowered one part of my life, but the other part was, like, I'm about to be free. I'm about to be in Atlanta and be free. And I seen all this freedom, all these wide open roads, all this clear sky. I'm like, the sky blue down here. Hmm. The sky, like, gray like hair on. Right, in Jersey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right yeah. On. Oh, no, the sky stay gray like hair on. Like, it do. When did the sky turn blue on Jersey? I don't remember. It be blue now when I go back mm -hmm. with the babies. When I was young... I'm sure a lot of people, they look up, their sky ain't blue. You know what I mean? Like, you actually part, start perceiving color at greater intensity the more you wake up to yourself. Mm. Hey, man, if you walk, I'm reading this thing right now, if you walk far enough on that path of enlightenment and awakening, things start glowing as you're looking at them because right. you're seeing the light they're giving off. Now, was, the, was that the first time you actually spoke up uh, to, like... Yeah, an audience, the, hell yeah, that shit was empowering. Well, well yeah, when, when you... When they tried to take your diploma away. Right. I had to back on the school board. We yeah. Back, I remember he took us to the school board meeting. And I remember he said, I want you to, he would say, Das, I want you to go up and and speak. And tell them what you, and I'd be like, what do I say? He says, Just tell them what you, what you experienced, what you think. Bruh, I went up there. I was all nervous. There's white folks up there. Some black folks too. Mm -hmm. You know, they always got some black folks in the school board. Some old lady with glasses that just listen to whatever the white leader tell her. You know what I mean? And, um. Uh, that was your, like your your first time on the stage. Man, I, well, that I remember in mm -hmm. a way that was meaningful. Okay. I got on stage to do silly things, to have fun, you know what I mean? But like, to 
speak life in the in the being. To speak, speak meaning. Yeah, to, to speak to power. Like, mm-hmm. Let me tell you. So I'm going up there and I start talking. I'm like, yo, look, all I want to do is go to college. Da, 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 da. I'm regular talking. I hear it mm-hmm, in the back. This happened in the black church. I had, I, I didn't get the, I didn't really get the, growing up, the way I grew up, I had to see a lot of stuff, but I never really got invited to nobody's church. Okay. So this is my first time really being in a black church. And I'm a teenager now. And I'm like, okay. But I felt something in me, I promise you. Yeah. Because the people yeah. in the back was giving me the mm-hmm. <laughs> and so I heard a couple of low rumbles of mm-hmm. And I promise you, it's like ocean. Like, you know, you start feeling that low wave yeah. coming. And it's like, that's how spirit is. Like, that's, you know, the, the word spirit comes from the same word as breath, respiration. Right. It's just energy. We, like my culture, we don't use the word spirit, we use energy. You know, so you feel the energy behind you. And it's literally moving in ways like energy do. So you hear mm-hmm. And you know that the crowd is getting it. And that means one person, another person co-signing. Everybody start feeling it, start feeling in their chest. Bro, I turned up. <laughs> I'm like, and I don't see none of y'all in my hood. It was a Kevin Hart moment. I said, and I ain't never seen not one of y'all motherfuckers in our hood. And what y'all been doing? Y'all ain't here to help. Y'all just here to judge. And they was like, tell them. Tell them. <laughs> preach. I started going in. They had to take me off the podium. Yeah. But I, we all graduated. Right, right. We all motherfucking graduated. I know that shit. Cool, cool, we all graduated. cool, cool. I went to Morehouse. They had to pull some strings to get me in because my GPA was low, but my SATs was high. Okay. A typical story of a lot of smart young men, mm-hmm. a lot of smart young girls. GPA low, SAT high. They listened. It was a black man named James Johnson that spoke on my behalf to the dean because they went to school together themselves. So you got to rely on them. You know what I mean? We got intergenerational things going on. Yeah. We got our elders got a relationship with other elders. Yeah, yeah. You feel exactly. me? Our parents and grandparents got a relationship with other parents and grandparents. So he was like the OG that talked to another OG, the dean of admissions, who was cool with me from, you know, he he was to give me a chance. He's like, man, of course it is. We got to let him come in on academic probation. We could barely let him in. He's like, man, I really believe in him. You got to take a chance. This is a gamble. I want you to take. Just do me a favor. Okay. Trust in me on this one. Because he believed in me. And, man, when I got to school, homie, I hit the dean's list. Word. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, and and that's it, it, and really, I took education in my own hands. No longer did I have to be a zombie sitting in somebody or somebody else's classroom. Now I chose the classes. If I didn't do well in it, I'd go to somebody else's class and it learned another way. I got people that I can call on. They'll teach me this, do this for me. I, and I'm smart, so I ain't even got to do 90% of what everybody else is doing. I'm right. figuring out shortcuts to everything. Right, right, so I'm right. jugging the system right now. Mm-hmm. So I'm speeding through college, but I'm able to live life now. So this is when you know, I'm moving from the guys in the streets of Jersey City to now I'm with the guys in the, in the streets of Atlanta. And and this is a whole new thing because now these men are in their 20s. Right. But they raised me up and I'm only 17. Right, yeah, because you graduated so early. Yeah, so I'm the little little young God. I'm the little homie. Mm -hmm. But they raised me up in not just what it is to be God, but what it is to be a man. Mm. Because them by being God put a higher emphasis on being a man. So they was the type of man that wouldn't be 25 shrugging off their responsibilities. Right. They'd run into the next jug. Even if they got to get it out the mud, they was getting to it. And they taught me how to get it. Any kind of way, out the mud, out the sand, out the water, mm-hmm. out the air, <laughs> I can get it. Out your pocket, I know how to get it. Right. And I and with the righteousness that came with it over time, because I done did everything in between then too to learn. And as righteousness grew in me, it just I just got a much much better way of doing things. By the time I was graduated from school from college, I became a school teacher. And after a few years of being a school teacher and serving young kids. And, and and raising them up, you know. This I'm in the hood teaching. This how long were I, you in? How long were you in Morehouse? When did you graduate? Two thousand one. Okay, so what? Yes. Yep. And then I went straight into teaching. I did teach straight for America. Teaching. I did teach for America because I didn't. Okay. I didn't have homie. A lot of college graduates, as many yo homie. A lot of people going to college don't know what they're gonna do with that yeah. degree. A degree don't equal a job. No. See, back in the day, a degree didn't equal a job either. It was just there was jobs, and the jobs required a degree. Now it's a whole new model out here, and you got to be smart. So if you want to get eighty thousand dollars worth of debt being done, go ahead. Mm-hmm. But you got to have a plan. Now, if you want to get a degree in something that you know the job is waiting for you, you're smart. That's called preparation. <laughs> That's like if I'm gonna go be a photo a graphic designer, I better go take a class in Photoshop. I can go learn that off the internet now. Right. But let's say you want to be a, 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 a school principal. Yeah, you got to get a degree for that, Bobo. Unless you're gonna do it at your house and learn about trial and error. Kids falling out the window and shit. You know what I mean? You going to jail. Yeah, you can learn it that way. It's all, you can learn any kind of way you want. By air on your ass. You imagine it. How right. do you want to learn? But 
I learn by practice what works. Meanwhile, I'm in the hood teaching. I open up my house, which is my, my old house, down the street from this house. Okay. I can walk to my old house. And in my old house, I took every one of the neighborhood kids in starting at age eight. If they was, if they was old enough to be able to tell on somebody mm-hmm. and explain themselves well, they could come to my house because they could speak clearly enough to where nobody could say we're doing no monkey shit. Okay. And, so, and them parents wasn't watching their kids. Them kids would be in the streets. So we would take them in to get them off the streets. Right. We would teach them supreme mathematics. Let them play on the PlayStation. They play. They learn supreme mathematics just to play on the PlayStation, just to get some air conditioning. Yeah, we yeah, give them water. Right. You know right. what I mean? Build them up as men. After years of mentoring, I said, "Well, damn, I don't want all these mamas questioning me what the fuck I'm doing with their kids." Right. Because their girlfriends want to come, the little girl want to come in the house. I, I ain't got no woman at the time to do that shit with. And then when I did have a woman, I didn't want all the little boys in the house. Mm-hmm. Because she had a daughter. So I had to cut it off, and I was figuring, how do I cut this off without? Cutting off my obligation. I got a duty. See, when you grow in your responsibilities, in your divinity, right? In your divine purpose and doing the work, you don't get the skill back. You don't get to really retire for real, for real. You right. don't get the fall back because right. that's when you get punished. Yeah. And you talk about, not my talking about the afflictions of the prophets. That shit come when you stop prophesying. Mm-hmm. That shit come when you stop serving. Moses went to 120 and did not lose eyesight in his eyes. Why? Because the motherfucker never stopped working. Mm-hmm. My mama still can crochet. She's 75 years old. You know why? She never stopped. You why that? So if you stop teaching, of course you get sick. Hell yeah. You fucking every every party you get to you. Because your whole body begins rebelling against you because you, your mind, the one part of you, your ego, the one part of you that you think is so fucking special is going against every other part of you now. Because your body doesn't agree. Your body said, I'm gonna keep you well as long as you keep doing right. 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 They'd be like, Supreme, how you getting so young? Look, you look young and healthy. I'm doing right, motherfucker. What you doing? <laughs> Fucking wrong with you? Make me wonder. Right. You getting what, you getting what worse? On your mind. Right. Like, is you saying you getting worse? Because I want you to feel the same way as I do. I want you to look in the mirror and see your improvement. If you see your skin getting drier, drink more water. Right. If literally this problem is gonna get solved, or else you got a, a if you if the water don't solve the problem, then you got a liver condition. If your skin don't stop with what it's doing after water, then you got inside shit. And you still need more water. And you still need to do certain <laughs> shit. You need to do a cleanse and all that shit. And then you can say, oh, okay, I see what you're talking about. And then it becomes less of a mystery. Right. I'm a mystery to people that don't do the work. Right. I'm a mystery to people that don't study. I'm an enigma to people that haven't realized their own purpose and don't want to. When you met your wife. Wait, we got to we skip the thing. We went from college to the books. To the so books. So the books happen only because... Right. I met my wife. Exactly. That that's right. why I want to get into that. Wouldn't have been no books without my okay. wives. Um because she freed me up. She gave you the direction too, or a woman don't gotta give a man direction. If a woman gotta give a man direction, she picked the wrong man. Mm. Okay. You can help him find his direction. You the man might have never been outside of his neighborhood. Right. He might be a, a, a pilot in the making. You can take him to the aviation thing. You can take him to the aviation center. Let him see if he's fascinated. You can take him to the cooking class. Maybe he's a world-class chef. You can take him to the gym. Maybe he just want to work out all day. You can take him there. You can lead a horse to water. You right, but you drink. can't make him drink. If you can make a horse drink, you're not a horse. <laughs> if you can make, a, if a woman can make a man do something, he's not a man. He's not a man. Right. Just in that moment. Now, he might go back to being a man later. Right. But he's not a man right then. Okay. And I'm not saying that you be stubborn. I'm just saying it ain't her business to make you you. Okay. How could she do that? She either gonna make you her son or her daddy. Basically, she's yeah. not gonna make you you because only the one that know you is who you you. She gonna only be able to reproduce the man she know, her daddy or her son. She gonna make you one of them, and trust me, you ain't gonna like it. You ain't gonna like either one. So Mecca didn't need either one. Okay. When Mecca met me, she met me as herself. And we, it was just chance, not chance, chance ain't real. It was mathematical. It was, it was supposed to coincide. It's not coincidental. When it's supposed to coincide, it's just mathematics. The universe is woven on a fabric of mathematics. We just, right. we just the seams the and the, and the yeah. stitches in the tapestry. Yeah. So, you know, as it unfolds, sometimes you can see it unfold. If you see the beginning of the pattern, you know the rest of it going to look like. Yeah. So at a point when I was really ready and I was, I had, I had left the country. 2005. I left the country because I had, I had bought up a million dollars worth of real estate. I was in a goal to be a millionaire by 25. Instead, I ended up with debt. 
problems, uh, crazy situations. I'm beefing my own brothers, like like literally we might kill each other type of situations. Just behind money, properties, business, and none of it felt good. I settled it all. All my situation was straight, but I still didn't like how it felt to just be so unsuccessful, really. And I was like, all I got is debt. And um, I booked myself a flight to Ghana. And um, I didn't plan on coming back. Hmm. And I stayed for almost a month. And I was like, in that month, it it, it woke me up to like a lot of a lot of new perspective. Like one thing that I realized was that financial success wasn't success because the happiest people that I met were in the villages. And, and they, they were hanging their clothes on the line. Right, the sun. right. And they, they washed yeah. them in a bucket in front of the house, you know? And then when I looked throughout the country, the more you had, the more bitter you were. Carefree people were people that had the least. I ain't saying they was homeless. I ain't saying they had to eat out garbage. They could eat fresh food. But you know what I mean? It was different. So this is what happened. So when me and Mecca started living together, right? So we had been talking forever from a distance. <laughs> email, phone, you know, long distance relationship. It was nice. But, like, I came back from Ghana with the realization that I wanted to live simple, live better, do right, and serve the, serve the people here. Because being in Ghana really showed me how bad off we are here mentally. Right. The mental and emotional trauma is the most significant. It's not the financial trauma. The finances is, is almost the same in some some, some scenarios. Okay. But Ghanaian people just and and I say this especially about the Ghanaian people because they might be Christian, but what their leaders did for them was their leaders gave them a great moral compass. You know, their leaders and the people that really went into that nation in particular gave them. There's other nations where they were really much more affected by the slave trade or by later interference from Western governments. But Ghana was different case, right? And um, it wasn't super revolutionary, but it was cool. And in that cool space, you see black people that just never went through slavery. And because of that, they might not have money. They might not have a lot of information. But they don't have the traumatic, the trauma that makes you emotionally unstable. Right. Or emotionally kind of negative. Like, they, like when I said, what are you working on? He said, I'm, I'm working on a nonprofit. A young man, 23 years old. I said, a nonprofit for what? In my mind, I'm reading him all wrong. I'm thinking he's about to tell me that he's about to serve, you know, these young men that's out here wilding down the streets. And I'm not saying that it's not happening in other parts of the world, but right. his concerns are so different. Here, he was... Trying to deal with internet porn. He didn't want young men to get on the internet to look at porn. Mm. And I'm sitting looking like 23. <laughs> this is the perfect age for internet porn. This is exact, but not really. You right. know what I mean? Right, like, right, this, right. Like, you really should, it's not the perfect age. I was thinking that though. I'm like, what? Why would you? Why would but you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Terry Crews just recently came out and was like, it, 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 it makes, the, makes people into objects that don't have consent. You know, it's a lot of. It's a lot of romanticizing lack of consent and lack of chemistry and lack of intimacy. So I ain't dumb no more. And so me not being dumb made it me like, I want other people to be smart. So when I came back from Ghana, I was like, how do I show people life now that I get it? Because I was about to leave the country because I was going bankrupt. Now I don't give a fuck. Mm. I feel like I'm a little bit enlightened. I want to bring this back home. I don't want to stay. I want to bring it home. When I got home, though, I'm trying to manage my life, be a teacher, and I just I, I couldn't really get into the work like I wanted because I'm I have a job. You can't I have a yeah, you working? I'm, yeah, I'm a real teacher, not a part time teacher, like a school teacher with a whole classroom every day. Um, and I was in my master's. No, at this point, I was working on my doctorate. Okay, so you was in school the whole time. The whole time, all the time I was teaching. I taught for fourteen years, mm. and. I went from my bachelor's 2001, I got my doctor by 2007, 2006, 2006. Okay. Yeah, so I got my doctor by 26. Yeah, it was 27, it was 2007, man. I got my doctor by 26, and still, even with that, that's work in the educational field, but it wasn't what I wanted to give the world. Right. And I'm supreme understanding a lot all day, all, all day long, but at work, I'm Dr. Sujan Das. And it was a conflict because I couldn't teach them the science of themselves as Dr. Sujan does. Right. But I could teach them enough, but not what I wanted.
it was it was just too much. I couldn't get famous, and I don't got no way to manage all the other ends of the business, and I'm not keeping track of my babies. Right, it was too much, and I didn't have babies, but I had the kids that was all over the neighborhood. I, these are my babies right now. Mm-hmm. I got my own kids. These I'm still like I'm in, I'm ra- I'm a raiser. You know, there's some some men they just like fathers, some women just like mothers. They mm-hmm. just they in their nature, and they know that this is what we do for the young. Um. And so when Mecca came down, man, it was it it, it was like the answer. It was the answer to everything. And she um, she got me my first book on self-publishing. It might be on one of these shelves. You find a really, really big, thick book. It's the, one of the fattest books you can find to say, A Complete Guide to Self-Publishing. I read that. And I read the whole book. And I was ready to start a publishing company. Mm. Yeah, because I get I get the dummies guys and the how-to books. Right. Before I, you know what I mean? To make sure I know everything about the subject. Then I might write something on the subject. So with publishing, I'm like, yeah, let me look into this. But by the time I was done, I was like, oh, I feel confident. Then I, you know, the homie Hotep who wrote the Hustle's Ten Commandments, he had told me that he had printed his own books. Well, he got them printed through somebody. And he put me on to the fact that you can get them printed. Up to this time, I never knew that a motherfucker like me would only can publish no budget really could get yeah. books printed. Yeah, I'm thinking that this is the realm of the rich. I'm thinking this only you can only do this if you're a rich and famous person. Right, right. You're gonna be an author. Right. I didn't know how to become an author. I thought you gotta be an author to publish a book. Right. Exactly. You know, an author was something you become. Like maybe you go work at Random House or something. So when I'm seeing this, I'm like, oh man, you can t- I can take my writing, my blogs. I got things on the internet since the 90s. Yeah, yeah. I can take the stuff that people say is great and I can publish it so people can read it in a book and it could be in a bookstore. All right, let's go. So I wrote my first book, which was like 10 years in the making because I took all my writings from blogs, school papers, okay. poetry, lyrics. Right. I put it all in one book and I made it all life lessons. I said, what do I want young men to know if they was 15 when I was blind, deaf, and dumb. Right. I wrote it for the me that wanted knowledge of self. And what I did was I put all the lessons that I accumulated from 15 to 26 into this book for a 15-year-old through 26-year-old. Right. You okay. see what I'm saying? Yeah. And it, people was hitting me in their 30s and 40s like, yo, I got a lot out of this book. And I'm like, it ain't no age limit to it. Right. It was just a target. Because I spoke to certain things that I spoke to pimping and other things you ain't really gonna care about in your forties. No, just for, it might be for trivia, fascination sake, just for interest sake. But at seventeen, you like I could really be a pimp, right? Yeah. Hey, this yeah. book got a chapter on pimping. I think I could do it. Right. And in the process, you be learning. Oh shit, I'm pimping myself. You're learning, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, it's just wake up juice. Right. It smells like sugar. You know what I mean? How did you feel after you created that first book? Not even a feedback, just after you put the in and closed that, or or just finished up the official book. Oh man, it's an amazing feeling, bro. But it was tiered. You're not gonna go through a and like people be thinking they gonna go through an amazing and miraculous epiphany. Those are gonna be rare, right? I had already been running businesses. I had sold everything. I've sold everything from cocaine to real estate. Mm-hmm. So I've sold kente cloth Air Force Ones. <laughs> <laughs> Little tiny video cameras that I got from China that, that nobody had at the time. Uh, custom jeans that I just splash paint on. You know, you name it. Photography. I sold photography portfolios for $100. You come to my house, take some pictures with me, lay in the bed, take some pictures. We burn it to a CD. It look, I do some Photoshop on it, make it look pretty. You got 12 pictures for $100 now. Go, you got a portfolio. <laughs> You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Right. Yeah, but I've always been a hustler, so I've always seen things come back. Mm-hmm. I've always been able to order something and get it, or I always had some some kind of inventory. But the books, it's different. This is me. This is my brainchild. This is all me. I never had my homie just had a, a vape pen manufactured, but this is like manufacturing something. But it's more than just a, a product. This is my teaching. Right. Book. This exactly. is my mind in case yeah. of the book. As I'm flipping yeah. the page, I'm like, yo, somebody's gonna read this, but I didn't know what was gonna happen. I was excited. But I knew I had 3,000 books to get rid of. Because mm. I said, like I said, go hard or go home. You yeah. only need two years to go hard with your hustle. Yeah. So I said, whatever I do now is going to either set me straight or I'm going to sit on merchandise like I always do. Whenever I got something I don't like to sell, like if I'm not into it, like I didn't, so I didn't like selling coke. I didn't like selling real estate. Why? Because selling real estate, in order to really profit, eventually you got to start selling properties with problems. Exactly. You got to start scheming. You got to start being yeah, crooked, like yeah. you said. Yeah. You're giving people stuff they don't really, they don't know that they're paying less for. Mm-hmm. Like you, they 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 know that they're giving you forty thousand, but they don't know it's gonna cost them eighty thousand. You ain't gonna right. tell them because right. they're making forty thousand. Yep. 
you let them run through less than 80,000. And then your heart carries that burden with it if you choose to. Or you become a demon and you don't let your heart carry burdens no more. Right. You know what I mean? Right. You, can do, you can do it that way and get a lot of money and then be real empty at the end. You know, because when they open that book, they're going to show you all them dollar signs on one side of the page. You know what I mean? And you're going to show yourself what you did on the other side of the page. You're going to show it to yourself. Ain't no mystery, God. Okay. And ain't no angels and spirits that need to... Pass- Look, man, when they was talking about the gods back in the day, they said they're attendants. Homie, them was OGs, like, like right now, with their people. And they was giving out game daily, leading people daily. Gotcha. And because of that, 2,000 years later, we call them God. So do you think, so creating your first book was more like a, like, like a, more of a relief. Like, I got it out. Hmm. Or was it more like a. Because so basically, but how, when I first did it, it was a hustle. Okay. When I first did it, it was another hustle because I didn't understand it yet. So you're not gonna understand your life. You're not gonna understand what you're walking into until you're in it. Right. You don't get a 360 of the room until you're in the room. You can't get a 360 of the view of the house from outside the house. So that first book was just the door opening right. or just the key to the door. Because it really was only part one. I wrote a 700 page book, homie. Okay. How to hustle and win was 700 pages. I had to split it into a part one and a part two. Okay. That's where the second book came about. The second book came out the next summer. I had to make money off the first book just, just to, to complete it. Book. So, in other words, if I don't sell these 3,000 books, you, as a hustler, you got to give yourself ultimatums, mm-hmm. deadlines, a little mm-hmm. bit of pressure. Mm-hmm. Right? So, I said, if I don't sell these 3,000, I don't have the money to print part two, which is really the second half, which is really the completion of the book. Mm-hmm. So, right. I really didn't even get them to read my book. I really only gave them the first half of my book. Right. Which... Ain't what I Put want. you in the mindset of I, I got to get these first books out. Right, so that's why I was a hustler at first. It wasn't mm. liberation then, okay? Because I didn't know what it was going to do for nobody. At this point, I don't know if it's going to sell or not. Right, that's the gamble part. You go and run into gambles in your life where you got this. You don't know what it's going to turn into. You just got to go with what it seems right. And then at the end, it's like, well, li- at least you can't beat yourself up for choosing what seemed wrong. Right. You can at least say, well, I went with what I thought was right. Right at the time, at the time exactly. So I said, I got to get rid of three thousand. But I know me. I could, I could, you see me hustle. Mm-hmm. I can sell, but I can't sell this much that fast. Right. So I sent cases of books to all the gods that I was close to throughout the country. Mm. I sent books to Joaquin in Seattle. I sent books to Freedom in Quamel in L.A. I sent books to original author in New York and Victorious in Brooklyn. And, you know, like every city, every city that was a major city, you had an outstanding five percent stationed in that city. Okay. And when I say we stationed, I don't mean like we get sent. I mean like literally like we just end up in these places and we end up doing the work for these communities. Okay. So, okay. So it's it's literally like on accident. Like, oh, I just happened to meet my mans and he's been here since day one. Right. But it's not even so much accident because it's so coordinated mathematical. Like it's a culture. Mm. Mm. It's a culture. So it go by the ways of the culture. See, people that, that's getting all the self right now, I don't mean to be mean, but they're getting all the self light. They getting out of the self with a side of egotism, mm. with a dash of self serving. You know what I mean? It's my personal journey, not what am I doing for the people. See, now the self will reveal itself to you if you serve people. If you serve enough homeless women, you will eventually learn the woman's struggle. Yeah. You will eventually learn how hard it is to be a woman out here. Serve enough homeless women. You ain't got to read no books. <laughs> you just got to li- listen earnestly to enough homeless women without judgment. Don't leave their stories. Don't try to teach them your first day listening. Be a humble student and listen. So you can do this with anybody. And you'll learn so fast, and you'll actually grow and become a better person. But most motherfuckers don't got the humility for it. So for them, when they accumulate knowledge, they're looking at my library like it's a material thing. Right. They're like, I want a library like that. How dare you? You want a mat- you turn what I got into a material thing. Mm-hmm. I want a library like that. You don't even know what's in my library. This could be all porn books. <laughs> Every last one of these could be smutting and fucking. Every last one, you dumb. Like, what are you thinking? Like, you right. You want a library consisting of what? You don't even know what books to put in. Right. You just want a bunch of books because you're a consumer. You're a consumer. Mm. Most people is consumers. They consume information. Don't do nothing with it. I listen to these sisters talking about this documentary. What the hell? At the bookstore next to me. We we at the bookstore. They ain't got not one book. They sitting. They using the Wi Fi. They having a business meeting. This that new shit. Having business not new shit. This at the bookstore. Shit. Business yeah. meeting at the bookstore. This that start a business. This is, this is how you know the person ain't really doing no business yet because they still meet at the bookstore and the coffee shop. Mm. This is how you know they start now, you start now, it's all good. You are. 
I'm meeting people in my house now. You know what I mean? I don't work enough for this. I don't work to make my house a place where I can meet clients. Right. If your house ain't the place where you can meet me, or you feel like you can't meet me in my house, or you can't pick a better location than this dusty Starbucks, we not doing the right kind of numbers. I feel like we're not doing healthy business. We just we just kicking it. We just kicking it and having coffee. Right. In our own poverty, in our own fucked up situation. We both talking about how fucked up we is. We call it a consultant session, but it's not. We both just going through our shit. I'm not with all that. So when people be like, I want to do what you're doing, no. I'm trying to unlock you to you. Right. You don't have the self-esteem to know that you're worthy enough to become the greatest you there is. Mm -hmm. You don't want to become the best you. You want to become a halfway me. You want to become a lesser version of somebody else rather than the greatest version of yourself. That's self-esteem related. And so that was my main thing, and I wanted to break that. Like I was like, damn, if... If I can get what I got out of Nile to Self, because that's what Nile to Self did for me. Right. Nile to Self gave me the confidence to go hop on the Greyhound bus and go to Cali to go meet Freedom and them. Like, yo, Freedom, I heard you out there. I heard from the internet that there's a God in LA named yeah. Freedom Allah. I, I'm, let me see who you are. Let me see if you're real. Let me see if I like you. Let me see if I got to tell you not really who, one of this. Right. Because we got to do that sometimes. Sometimes we travel just to be like, nah, y'all not doing this right. Mm -hmm. And it ain't no charges to remove. Ain't no charge. Ain't none of that. Like, you, your shit getting revoked through culture because nobody going to bear witness to you. Now, since the internet been cracking, a lot of that's broken down. Right. Because now via the internet, you can play like you're the greatest leader, but you just really, like I said, a lonely internet lunatic. That's the... That's deep. Um, That's what it's meant for, LOL. Right, lonely. Lonely online lunatic. <laughs> so, you've seen the value a lot of the, uh, the self-knowledge. Uh, why did you feel like you had to give it instead of take it for gain? You know, why did you feel like That's it was... That's what culture teaches. If you do that, you're a 10%er. Okay. If you start exposing yourself... See, look, in my culture, I can't even have no big head. We got traditions against that, man. We got a whole tradition about the big-headed scientist. You know, that was the one who made the devil. You know, he just... He, he, and, and see, he might not have physically had a big head, but it got a lot to do with your ego. Mm -hmm. You think your vision is the vision. You ain't even consult nobody else on the vision. On their vision. Just your vision. Too much of that. And then people... People is using the ancestors. They name-dropping the ancestors to excuse their poor behavior. They trying to act like the ancestors to co-sign them. You can't prove that. So when you use the spiritual forces to justify behavior that society says is not acceptable, and by society, I mean us, we can make society out of ourselves. We don't got to right. include white folks in what we decide as society. If the four people in this room right now agree that lying is not cool, and then somebody in here tell us that they're lying, but it's because the spirits let them lie, we can still agree that you ain't shit. <laughs> and we can still agree that we ain't going to beat your ass, we ain't going to kill you, but you don't get to be around our children. Right. We ain't going to spend no money with you. And we ain't going to invite you to events. If you show up, we ain't going to send you home. But we ain't inviting you. And that's old culture. That's traditional. That's basics. You know, are, are this we is what we go back to. Are we afraid to do that? Go back to our true culture or to speak out on what's not working in our culture right now? Do you think that as a whole we're afraid of that? I don't think we're going through anything as a whole that I can pinpoint that easily. Because okay. as a whole, it's hard for me. Because, like, there's too many parts to the whole. Yeah. There's like, a lot of puzzle pieces. The only way I can break down the whole is in terms of a 25,000-year cycle. Mm. Like, the whole is what's experiencing this 25,000-year cycle of history. Our history goes in 25,000-year cycles with shorter periods in it. And those periods of history, they, they bring up timeless conflicts with new characters. We, we sensitive right now because we're not in our roots. So it's not that we're afraid... Because really, we're getting back into who we are, and it's more lack of knowledge than fear. It's more ignorance than fear. Right. Because the fear is really fear of the unknown. And so it's the ignorance part. Like, it's like, I want to go with you, bruh, but I'm scared you're going the wrong way. See, people don't say that to me no more because I've shown them enough that, hey, yeah, I'm, over the years. I'm going the right way. Yeah. And I made it so public. I didn't have to. I didn't have to document what I was going through with grief when I lost my wife with breast cancer. I didn't have to document what we was going through when she had breast cancer. Mm -hmm. But I did it because everything is real. Yeah, we're vegetarian. And she still got breast cancer. Right, right. She got the BRCA1 mutation in her genes, which means that her mama got breast cancer at 34 and died at 37. 
And Mecca got breast cancer 34 and died at 37. It's Damn. a very difficult thing to undo. And I'm working on it right now because I got a daughter that's 20. You know what I mean? And I'm feeling successful as a motherfucker because I done figured out one of the key ingredients to disease, and that's stress. Yeah. And if I can teach my daughter to be carefree and not give a fuck about these lame-ass motherfuckers out here <laughs> just trying her patience, then I done made a winner. So I know she's going to be all right, but that's another thing to think about. But that's another part of the journey that people need to see. Like, damn, they ate healthy and those kids still cancer. Right. So it ain't as easy as just saying, eat some soursop and you right. beat the cancer. You fucking idiot. Yeah, you that ain't even that the thing. real thing. It's the sour sop leaf, not even the fruit. <laughs> Motherfuckers gonna be giving themselves diabetes, eating the sweet ass fruit all day long, and they be having diabetes and cancer now. Trying to figure it and out. That's your ass. <laughs> that's hilarious. Because your ass done made a graphic called it an electric food, and they think you're smart now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's all you gotta do now, homie. Make a graphic. Yeah, and get that reposted. Oh, I put shit up on the time. internet. I'll be showing them the title of the shit, the cover of the shit. I put a detox patch on my feet. It's a little. They put it's bamboo vinegar. Mm-hmm. You get at the Asian store, bro. You put it on your feet. It sucks. Sucks some toxins out your feet. You feel the shit. I show the box on it on IG. I make sure they can see the cover of the box and they can see the name of it. Right. You know how many DMs I got talking about where you get that? What's that? Nobody that same do fucking research. phone that got the Google on it. Right. Nobody want to do research. Nobody. Wanna you can literally nothing. hold your thumb on some shit. Because Google right now is relying on you not to think. Right. They so happy you don't think. Apple and them so happy you don't think. Apple, they so happy that you willing to let them choose for you. Because mm-hmm. the motherfuckers damn sure going to decide when it's time for you to get that microchip. And your ass going to show up. Because guess where they're going to give it out at? The Apple store. Right. The T-Mobile store. Yeah. How do you respond to a lot of your backlash on social media? Like, what, like, what was like one of your biggest moments... What was your first biggest backlash on social media? And from that, what did you learn, learn from it? Show you the wildest, best shit that I learned to do to that shit. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Man, fuck you. You don't even get conversation out of me. Right. Like, if you come into me on some whole shit, you just need attention. Attention seeking. You ain't mm-hmm. trying to get education. You ain't challenging me because you don't have a platform to. You got 200 followers. You can't challenge me. You can challenge me if we both on a similar platform. And you're saying, Supreme Minister don't teach what's right. Right. Okay. What do you teach is right? Now we now we see who teach what's right. I ain't even compete with nobody. Because if you teach what's right, I'm going to tell them to go to you. I seen something on your IG. You said something just like that. You said, you when you're coming on my page and you're making comments, no, you're not here to teach. You know what I'm saying? It, I mean, you're not here to learn. If you was here to learn, you can just go to Google to learn. You right. know, and that's mostly white folks. Mm-hmm. White folks come on black and brown pages to police them, and the way that they learn to police is rather than fighting, they ask questions. Right. And they raise challenges. What about this? Why not this? And what they're doing is they have these cookie cutter things. They're giving them out at the white meetings. Right. I'm not lying to you. When I say that, I may be making it sound fun like they have in white meetings. White they give meetings out strips, like fortune cookie paper <laughs> with like little sayings to put in the comments. But no, they talk amongst themselves when we're not invited on all the things that we don't know they talk about amongst themselves. It's a cold. You really they, only they, find they, out what they're talking about when we get tapes of them talking amongst themselves. Right. You ever heard white folks talking amongst themselves about black people? Recorded? Yeah, it's really bad. Yeah. It's re- really, yeah. really bad. Yeah. And these is like Exxon executives. You know what I mean? Mm. owners of of NBA teams people that have access to all the highest advisors in the world so would their mind go wrong or mind go right think about it the most powerful people in the white world do they have dumb ideas about how things go or are they really reflecting what the white world in general thinks even at its height right you gotta think like these are not Trump is not poor nor is he uh, on Medicaid he is white power. He is the collective identity of the white man of America right now. It's, a, it's literally a sum up of global events. That's hilarious. We the people, we the adults of the planet, have told the baby that the bad behavior has gotten out of control. And they throwing a tantrum. And, it's, and they, now they're throwing a tantrum. And they tear up the crib that we gave to them. Okay, so um, explain being a single father with two... Young black girls. How old are your girls? Shit, I wish they was both young. I got an eight year old and a twenty year old. Okay, so you got. Yeah, <laughs> when, when we lost Mecca, it was two thousand fourteen. Nalani was uh five, and Nina was seventeen. Nina hadn't even graduated high school. Mm. Uh, Nalani 
was in a kind of like almost like a homeschool setting, like a like a group homeschool, like you know where basically like a school run out of someone's home. You can run a homeschool out of your home and let other kids attend it. Yeah, yeah. And there's actually some really genius ways you can work that if you work that K twelve dot org thing and have them send you some technology to mm-hmm. because then they send you the state curriculum with the technology to do it with, but you at the house learning African principles. Right, exactly. But you take yeah. the state test. Long as, you, long as your teacher's a good teacher, you can pass both. Right. And we got to do it every day anyway. We got to mm-hmm. learn two cultures all the time anyway. We got to learn these folks' bullshit mm-hmm. and our own and shit. And ours. Yeah. And then the worst part is you got to be Indiana Jones to learn your own shit. Uh, go, speaking of that. Wait, uh, but are you talking about kids, though? So this all going into my... Like, I got girls that I'm raising in this era. Like, yeah, my bad. Okay. Yeah, no, because I thought about it. Because I'm like, I know your question was about the kids. And I just thought, homie, this is why I teach. Mm-hmm. I, bro, I teach because when I got Mecca, I got a 10-year-old daughter with her. Yeah. So before I was even a biological father, I was a father in the real sense of having to raise a 10-year-old girl in a fucked up world. I'm already seeing how many sexual predators. I'm talking about all this white shit, but I'll tell you, it's an intersection between them. We live in a white world. We're not of it, but we in it. Mm-hmm. And because we in it, we deal with the dirtiness of it. We in the mud, in they dirt. The dirt they made for us. They made right, some mud right, pit, bro. Right. They made us our own mud pit. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, they like... There's so much evil in the world. I was like, man, I got to protect my daughter, not just from the, the, the evil you get into when you're around these other people, mm-hmm. but even around our own people. Because we all got it in us. That's why nobody can be like, yo, Sabrina, I'm so offended. You made it all about white people. Well, how dare you? I made it about the devil. Is you the devil? Because if you, you're the devil if you're going against righteousness. Right. And over here, what I'm talking about is righteousness. What I'm talking about is everybody should be right. Everybody should be moral. Everybody should have ethics. Now, if I'm showing you a group of people who historically just don't do that, it's your job to teach them to do it. Not to argue with me so that you telling me I can't see what I see. Don't piss on me and call it rain. Because that's white behavior. Yeah. And that's devil behavior. Yeah. You can change. Right. But now when you don't want to change, that's devil. Because that's want to be stuck. That means the only way to go is down. Mm-hmm. You can only get worse. If you're making excuses for one bad behavior and you're telling me you're going to continue, it's only going to be two, three, four. You're going to make an excuse for all bad behavior so. Because that's the way you function. Your paradigm become your way of life. Yeah. So when people think like devil, they can't help but be devil. So I'm just cleaving the world between righteousness and devil. It ain't that hard. You want to be white and you want to be with white folks? Well, you already chose. You chose your team. You chose a team to say fuck you to the whole world. You ain't going home to your daddy saying, Daddy, I don't like your people. Daddy, I don't like you, Grandpa, Uncle. Y'all are all racist. Y'all are all white supremacists. You don't go home and do that shit. Mm-hmm. Fucking Josh. <laughs> you go on my page and say I'm making you feel hurt. Nah. Uh, raising your girls out here, man. What, what is the what's the biggest obstacles? Them. Just them growing, no more doubt. or less. Greatest obstacle to anyone is themselves. Okay. I got to deal with all that they come up with that don't help them go nowhere. Hmm. Okay. Like if my daughter, if my youngest daughter or my oldest daughter decides to get into an emotional rut, a cycle, feeling pain, doing things that cause you to feel the pain, that do the things that cause you to feel the pain, that do the things that cause you to feel the pain, mm-hmm. bum, 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 bum. endless cycle that gets worse and worse. If, if they do that, nothing in the world can save them until they decide to break out of it. Right. Can't break out of an internal cycle that's happening in your head. Getting sad, doing bad, getting sad, doing bad, getting sad, getting mad, doing bad, getting sad. Like, that's a cycle. Only you can decide, oh shit, I see the cycle. Because you got to see the cycle first. You got to be like, oh yeah, every time, like I know me. I'm, I'm in a conversation, I'm in a communication. So if somebody read me wrong and come up with some shit that I'm not saying, be like, oh, you mean this? I'd be like, man. And it, it bothers me. Right. It's a trigger for me. Right. Because I'm used to being misunderstood. And I should be used to it, but it's still a trigger for me because it matters so much to me. So things that matter a lot to you. Mm-hmm. So my girls mat- care really a lot about how they look. They'll never be happy because it's a day you're going to be ugly, motherfucker. Mm-hmm. If my girls care too much about boys, I'm never raising them. None of that. You going to be a good wife or you going to find your good husband. You going to find your prince. Man, fuck a prince. These niggas is ducks. And I'm not... Maybe we don't need to conclude that part, but like I really don't teach them to be waiting on no dude to be their savior. Right. True. Like, cause, cause the thing is, men right now in the world, 
I ain't gonna lie. We fucked up. We fucked up, and women is further along than us. I ain't even gonna lie. It's the age of Aquarius. Common said that shit about 10, 20 years ago, and it's, it's true. And the reason is multiple. For one of the reasons because black men are more punished and repressed. Right. So the idea of becoming is dangerous, actually. Yeah. Because if you become as a black man, hell, you could become God. Punished, yeah. No, you could become God, which means you'll be killed. Right. You okay. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You could become strong and be punished, or you could go all the way and become and be your killed. ultimate reality mm -hmm. and become a target for extermination like all the other men who become God or godly. A black man is God is the scariest thing that the white world has experienced. Nobody else is intimidated by it because all people throughout the world have black gods. I got them all up throughout the house. I got Buddha. You know what I mean? Yeah. We all have recognized a black... So nobody got a problem with the black man being God anywhere in the world except for white folks. And not because it's not true, but because it is true. But because the moment <laughs> you know yourself, they know the time is up. Right. That's Their everybody in the world. Up. Everybody in the world is like really just getting back to knowing themselves right now. And a lot of people are still just walking that slow road. Mm -hmm. So what I've seen in men is that the men have really been broken down. The men have been emasculated. And it's not even their fault. Most men that's under the age of 30 right now have had so many estrogen uh, 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 gender bending chemicals pumped Injected into the system in them. Right. from before birth, prenatal. It's in the womb. The women, the mother takes it in through a number of sources, and before long, she's got a hundred different chemicals in her placenta blood, all of which become a part of your body's chemistry as you grow. They tested this on frogs. The frogs is in the rivers where yeah. the same chemicals have runoff. The frogs go from Turn being boys males, yeah. to girls. Female, yeah. These these little boys is not. They not just. They not going up five years old thinking about sex. So when you think that they're making a sexual preference at five, that's stupid. Then nobody's making a sexual preference at five. You're not even choosing to be straight at five. Right. You're, not, you're not choosing to be a fucking. You're just choosing your orientation to yourself. Mm. So the little boy feel girly at five. Yeah, he might feel girly at five. He might have all kinds of girl feelings and emotions and who knows. And he really relate to his mama better. And his daddy might be in the house. And why? Well, the only explanation now is not culture, but chemistry. You got two parts to your homie. You can't act like it's all your mind. It's your body too. Yeah. My body got some chemicals in it that make me prone to depression. I can go through what people call bipolar if I let it go to an extreme of unhealthy. They call it manic depressive back in the day. All that means is you get down and then you get busy. That's some bullshit to call it manic depressive. Get down and get busy is actually very healthy for most geniuses. Most geniuses have periods of great creativity and they settle down. The part where we end up in the white world is when it becomes manic depression. Right. Right. Because in our own homelands, that shit was called being a craftsman, right. a creator, creator. a exactly. fucking poet, an artist, a prophet. But in the white world, that shit is a disorder because when they go through that shit, that means when they was having a manic depression in Europe, that meant this motherfucker was real quiet for six months out the year. And then he killed everybody. <laughs> but for us we experience it the unhealthy way too because we get real creative get real energized get real busy then the world crushes us and we don't know how to react we don't know how to get around things like that that's what I teach I teach how to hustle and win I teach how to get around anything even an immovable object mm -hmm. you can either move it or move around it mm -hmm. motherfuckers stay banging their head into it though why? because they don't value their head low self esteem <laughs> Fucking you value you the rock more than you value you. You value the rock's position and your own commitment towards going the straight way rather than saying I might need to go a different way. Because mm -hmm. you got to see that I might be... See, motherfuckers be real hard on themselves, but they don't be real hard on maybe I'm doing it wrong. You real hard on every other thing you try, but not hard on how you treat yourself. Like, you ain't never had a bad talk with yourself like, man, you treat yourself like shit. But, but, but that's a good point. That's a good point. People don't. Is, I, I've been sciencing it up, bro. Every, this, what I'm giving you right now is what ain't in the books. Mm -hmm. This is what I figured out since the books. So I'm like, shit, I get to get it all out and make sure it makes sense. I got three motherfuckers listening to me. Do the shit make sense? I can tell by... If, 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 if she look at me like... Mm. If, she, if, her, <laughs> if, if, her, if her face go lopsided, I know I'm saying some crooked shit. I know, you know what I mean? Because but nobody's face twisted up yet, so I know I ain't saying no twisted shit. You see a person face twist then you know you're saying something don't agree with them. You try to go left, they going right. right. You know what I mean? Or they perpendicular, you trying to go straight. Something like that. So same thing with the immovable object. Like you, certain shit is not even a person. This is a life thing. This is a thing you can't get around. White supremacy right now is a thing. 
You go out to the road, you better be aware that you get pulled over, you might die if you don't do it right. You might die even if you do do it right. Exactly. So sometimes you got to know. You know what I mean? What the situation is. Um, you got to be wise. You yeah, don't know yeah. what's going on. And I'm not trying to say it like we're trying to paint it all on this, like, like the listener that's white. It's like, me? Right. No, not you, bruh. Not you in particular. Maybe you in 10 years, though, if you don't change. Because you either accept all this as okay, and you're standing up against it. You're, like, offended by what I'm saying about it. And you're like, how can he say these things? This is, he's the problem, which means you're going to be a reinforcement for the system. They not they already did the estimates. 2050, America could mostly be black and brown. And they right. already might be getting there. Right. So. They got to find alternative. They don't got to, bro. They could just be righteous. That's the, <laughs> that's the bullshit. They don't got. Why do people act like they don't got no choice, man? This is what I hate about white supremacists. White supremacists and white nationalists think they have no choice but to fight for the white race. But it just shows that you are a people that have not conquered your limited ass ego because you think that the reality of you is not rooted in your being, but in your skin. Mm. And imagine if that was the truth for, for everything, because then what the hell is an albino? If your whole identity is your skin, an albino might as well kill himself because he's not what he's supposed to be. Damn. But unfortunately, a person with albinism, not an albino, mm -hmm. but a person with albinism knows I am a human being full of stories, full of history. 10,000 motherfuckers worth of ancestors went into making me. It took 10,000 million worth of ancestors, billions, you know what I mean? The number goes, you can make the number as big as you want, because how much ancestry you got? Right. Yeah, true story. Or how many single-celled organisms did it take before they finally made your ass? You know what I mean? Down the billions of years that it took to arrive at you. So a person with albinism, he got, they got knowledge of self. They got real knowledge of their real self. But a white person, think about it. They're not a person. They're a white person. They're not a man. They're a white, white man. man. Right. They don't got the knowledge of themselves being a man. Because if they was a man, then they could be a man amongst any man. Yeah. But they only feel themselves as a man when they feel themselves in solidarity with a white brethren. Where if you know the history of whiteness, you know that's based on a lie. All y'all motherfuckers is fighting and killing and raping each other and taking over each other's lands until you realize that you need to come together so that you can take over our lands. And so then you dissolved all those ethnic identities that you worked so hard to build up after years of going to war where you became Italians and Celts and Gauls and all these different things, and then you were French, and then you were German. But now, you didn't create a whole new thing. Now we're just white. Everybody that want to be white can just join the game. <laughs> and so when I tell white people they got a choice, I tell them the choice to stop being white. And just be a man. Yep, and everybody that tell you they white, Tell them it's a shame you side with that gang. They we really see where your balls are, white boy. You talking all that anti-racist shit. You ain't talking shit until you go among white people and tell them they're the devil. Then we see. You go amongst white people and say, you know what? I've been around y'all all my life and I know how wicked y'all are. And I was wicked too. And what I did was I decided I don't want to be that way no more. And I'm going to challenge you to either listen to me about what I stopped doing or you can continue in your way and ostracize me. And guess what happened? Most of them, they get ostracized. Here's the, here's the best part, though. They still get to come around. Mm -hmm. They still get the inheritance. Oh, yeah, of course. Of that's, course. That's, but no, bro. You know and I know. But not the fools inviting them to the Naya Bing. Right. Because you think that they really got kicked out of the white world. And so you let them be an infiltrate in your world. Where they can get free pussy, of course, because you know they're getting the best pussy in the world. Mm -hmm. And white boy with dreads, they get to pick the finest queen. All they got to do is cook a vegan dish. Because <laughs> you know our standards is at an all-time low. Because that same queen, she been fucking with some of us that ain't been even cooking or nothing. Right, right, right. You know, right. so yeah, right. you know, you can be mad at the white boy, but make sure you ain't got to be mad at yourself too. That's my thing. Go, go ahead and be mad at white folks. Just make sure you look in the mirror first. 
Because you can only be mad at them about the shit that you've mattered in yourself. You you do have a DVD out. You do have a, you do have a medicine DVD out. Go oh, ahead green medicine, that. man! Look, I, yeah. I, look, I'm telling you, people wasn't reading, and I wasn't promoting. I wasn't doing promotions and marketing because I was grieving and getting my family straight. Like I said, mm -hmm. my daughters didn't have the kind of support systems I wanted from the house. So I had to build support systems for them. You got to build a village. Okay. So I've been building a village for three years, and in that time, I didn't get a chance to build my business because you really can't do that much that well that's why when you see a lot of our leaders from back in the day they children didn't rock with them like that because they left their children hanging and i'm not doing that okay my baby stayed with me and they always provided for and protected and i'm not knocking nobody i'm literally like i salute the 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 the, the past you know what i mean those that, that, that didn't get it as right because it was from them that i learned what not to do i learned don't because i could have been on the front lines of ferguson Right. Or I could have been with Mecca in Pittsburgh while she was battling cancer. You know what mm, I mean? Yeah. True. So th that's what made me choose the way. And I really feel like I've gone the right way for the sake of not just my family, but for the sake of my being and what purpose I have to fulfill here. Sometimes we're not mindful of that. We're doing everything. We're checking off everybody else's list. We're not checking off. Right. Your list. Own list. You could, if you yeah. look far enough down the road, you can see your road. Like if you really like look past your own nose rather. If you're only looking at your own nose, you won't see the road. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the road long enough, you'll even see a faint blue line telling you where to go. Yeah. You know, it's a little GPS for you. You will get an idea. You know, I'm just driving to go the right way. Where, where are they going to be able to uh, get get your, you know your new that? DVD? Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> I just want you to confirm. Can every witness confirm that? Yeah. That yeah. Supreme, Miyagi, that? Supreme just smashed a fly with his hand. <laughs> yeah. And put it on the table. Like, beat that. Beat <laughs> So, uh, uh, where where can they get the DVD? What's the best way for them to reach you? We, we're gonna have to continue this interview, man. We we two hours got, into this. I got, I got fifty fucking interviews worth of material in my head right about now, bro. Right. Oh, we're coming they, they back gonna, again. They're gonna be mad when I start coming out with books because I'm a, I'm gonna have a new book out every month. But um, I just wanted to think about how do I get um everybody a little further along because they lost motivation. Mm hmm. Like they got healthy, they're doing yoga, they're jogging. We 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 know a little bit more about the world and its wickedness. We breaking down conspiracies. Anything in how to hustle and win, hood health, knowledge of self, when the world was black, locked up but not locked and down. And these are all your books. Yeah, these were all my books yes. that I that put out that were put out through Supreme Design Publishing. And then there was the books that I put out through our sister company, which were reprints of classic books like books by Du Bois, his books that were historically important and books that I thought would 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 change the way people think. We even did children's books. Um, real life is no fairy tale. All these books taught something specific, but what I wasn't able to teach people was how do you, as an adult, take all this knowledge that will depress you, and yet liberate yourself from the burden of feeling overwhelmed with all this negative information, and live a life that is so more abundantly positive, and life giving, and constructive, that this negativity doesn't cause you to feel miserable at random moments throughout the day. Okay. And I realized that there's no one Instagram post I can make to that. <laughs> nah. <laughs> it's not a Facebook post long enough that I can make to that. And I tried to touch on it, but nobody was getting it. And then I would take people in the woods on, on Instagram on IG Live and talk to them. And the question they would have would just let me know they were so far from the reality I was trying to take them to. I was trying mm. to take them on the journey I'd been off about two, three years, which was rewiring my own brain. Yeah. I knew I was traumatized. I knew I was grieving. I knew I was already depressed before this and even deeper depressed now. What do I do? DVD is called Green Medicine. Sound like weird. Yeah. It's about nature. You know, getting back to your nature is your medicine. And that's what I realized. I had to take people back to their nature because we're so far from our nature. Even with the information, we become consumers of negative information. We want to see every police shooting. We want to see it. Not do anything about it. Just want to see it. Mm -hmm. Which means you just, if you look at it like a bank or look at it like a set of pluses and negatives that you put in your head, look at the two pages of the book. Here go the book again. The two pages. You put a bunch of negatives in the book. What are you doing to balance it out? Right. Not even in your terms of your service to the world. Fuck that. What are you doing in terms of your service to yourself? Self-care matters. You can't be a revolutionary and you ain't engaged in the revolution within. You gotta be a transformative process within to bring about heaven within. Right. Health within, wellness within. So when you feel well, do the work. You can't do the work if you're tired, sick, depressed. 
angry. Mm-hmm. They're angry. That's why you see all these internet leaders banging other people, barking other people. They angry with themselves. Right. When they say that shit, they angry with their family members. They angry with their spouse. They angry with their girlfriend. They angry with their, their side chick. They angry with the the, 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 the mistress that's extorting them right now. If you don't tell that, that we in a relationship, then I'm going to go on the internet and blast you. They angry at all that while they're trying to be a teacher of humanity. I said, you know, like, that ain't going to help nobody. Because all you're doing is making the people feel a little bit angry like you. Now, when we have a police encounter, we bucking at the police. Right. Didn't, really, the police didn't know that we was about to have, he was about to have a hostile encounter. We done made a hostile now. Now, hey, the motherfucker was ready to kill anyway. He just wasn't ready to kill you. Right. Right. So, yeah, that's what the green medicine is for. Because I'm like, I need you to go back to you. I don't care what you is. Care what you claim, care what you been through, care what you're thinking is now. You need to go back to you. <laughs> if you listen to this much shit, and you really trying to learn something, right? And I promise you, to learn some shit. Same with the DVD. If you listen to what I'm explaining for you to do in just 55 minutes, yeah, it's a lot of info. In it's there. nine piece, nine segments of different stages of things you need to do to where you might take nine months to do it, mm-hmm. or nine years. Uh, what's the best way for everybody to reach you? SupremeUnderstanding.com. SupremeUnderstanding.com. Yep. Or SupremeDesignOnline.com. Or just type in Supreme Understanding in the Google. My social media pop up. Everything will pop up. Mugshots might even pop up. <laughs> you find everything you need to know. Uh, okay. Well, again, thank you. Thank you very, very much, Supreme, for uh, allowing us this time, man. Uh, we are going to continue this. Um, But as for now, we appreciate you for sticking around for both of these interviews. And uh, that was the show. I appreciate you for having us.